In the vast arena of professional football, so many characters are spawned, a sport that is notoriously known for having enormous egos at the highest level. Today, we delve into the enigmatic journey of one of the most intriguing figures that the football world has ever known. Lifting it into the corner! Absolutely brilliant Papalo! Mario Balotelli, a name that once stirred excitement, anticipation, and controversy in equal measure, with his undeniable talent, strength, and an eye for goal. Balotelli was seen as a future star from a very young age, but amidst the brilliance, there was always a shadow lurking, a shadow that would ultimately reflect badly over his once promising career. Born in Palermo, Italy, to Ghanaian immigrants, Mario Balotelli's journey to football stardom was anything but conventional. His parents moved to Brescia two years after he was born, and young Mario was placed in foster care as a three year old when his biological parents couldn't pay for his head care needs. He moved in with his foster parents and was raised in a Jewish household by Francesco and Sylvia Balotelli, taking on their last name to become the Super Mario that we know and love. From the streets of Brescia to the hallowed grounds of San Siro, his rise to fame was meteoric as he joined local club Le Mezzane, where he got promoted to the first team at just the age of 15. And yet, we catch a glimpse of how much of an enigma our boy is, as he would quote, pee on our bags containing our clean clothes, and he would pee on people too. An act that was sure to piss a lot of his teammates off. But to Mario, he was just having fun, something that would become somewhat of a theme throughout his career. Around this time, he also had an unsuccessful trial at Spanish Giants Barcelona, and according to reports, we almost got to see a Super Mario and a Messi tandem on the pitch. But his agents allegedly demanded for too much money. Mario and his agent didn't come to regret this decision though as he eventually sealed the move to Inter Milan, linking up with a manager that never seemed to give up on him, even when everybody did. He joined on loan with an option to buy, which Inter triggered at the end of the first year. He made his debut for the Italian Giants on the 16th of December 2007 as a substitute of the bench, but he would have to wait just a bit for his first goals in the iconic striped jersey as he grabbed two goals against Regina in a 4-1 Coppa Italia win. He had a wonderful first season at his new club, scoring 7 goals in 15 appearances, but the peak of the loss came when he scored twice against Juventus in the Coppa Italia, helping his team to a 3-2 win that gained him widespread national attention. His powerful presence on the pitch and remarkable goal-scoring ability captured the imagination of fans all across, except of course, the Juventus fans, who subjected him to racial abuse all through an April 2009 match. What is a story involving a black man and the Italian league without a dab of racism to go with the pasta? But honestly, when it came to Balotelli. Racism wasn't just the season, it was the old damn dish, as it was specifically targeted, especially by the fans of the old lady, because he was different. However, it wasn't just his footballing prowess that set Balotelli apart, it was his charisma, his larger than life personality, his unapologetic embrace of who he was, both on and off the field. He wasn't just a footballer, he was a cultural icon, a symbol of defiance in a world obsessed with conformity. I think too many people talk, too many people speak about me bad. And now they have just to shut up, that's it. We the fans like complaining that players these days don't have personalities and they act like robots. But when we get the relatable superstars like Mario Balotelli, they get ridiculed and marginalized just for being different. Of course, he wasn't devoid of blame. As for all his talents and charisma, Balotelli's career was marred by a series of missteps, controversies, and unfulfilled potential. From unfit tantrums to unfit antics, like publicly supporting AC Milan while playing for Inter, he became just as famous for his controversies as he was for his goals. He was once described by Jose Mourinho as unmanageable, getting into altercations with the special one on a regular basis and showing unnecessary volatility on the pitch. I remember one in, uh, in Kazan. We went to Kazan in the Champions League and um, in that match I had um, all my strikers uh, uh, injured. I was really in trouble and Mario was the only one. Mario gets uh, a yellow card in, the, in minute 42, 43. So when I go to the dressing room at half time, I spend, I would say, 14 minutes of the 15. Of the I was spending 14 minutes speaking only for Mario. Mario, I cannot change you. I cannot make a change. I don't have a striker on the bench. Don't touch anybody. Play only with the ball. When we lose the ball, no reaction. If somebody provocates you, no reaction. If the referee makes a mistake, no reaction. Mario, please. Minute 46. No way. Red card. No way. <laughs> the media dubbed him a problem child, a loose cannon, 
labels that Balotelli, for better or worse, couldn't seem to shake off. He even admitted himself that although he wasn't crazy, he does strange things sometimes. And as the antics piled up, so too did the doubts about his commitment, his discipline, and his ability to fulfill his immense promise. But amidst the chaos of playing in the Serie A, there were fleeting moments of brilliance, glimpses of the player Balotelli could have been, ending his Inter Milan career with 28 goals and 15 assists, a solid return for a young player before the start era. He got granted a dream move to England by his mentor Roberto Mancini as he joined Manchester City the same year he won the prestigious Golden Boy Award, an award won by top class talents that go on to be all time greats. And, um. Manchester United! <laughs> Mario would play some of his best football under Mancini, but his antics only got worse as he crashed his Audi just weeks into his City career. Again, another frequent occurrence in Mario's life. He also got fined for throwing darts at his teammates because he was bored. Even when he was in the comfort of his own home, Balotelli was up to mischief, burning down part of his own home just hours before an important game against Manchester United, when he and his friends set off fireworks in the bathroom. But he still grabbed two goals in a 6-1 thumping of Manchester United, celebrating in an iconic way and sparking a fashion trend amongst Nigerian youths. I'm telling you, if you didn't have a wire always me shirt back then, you just weren't cool enough. At the height of his career, he never knew what to expect from Balotelli. One day, he's setting fire to his own house. The next day, is the face of a fire safety campaign. For someone known predominantly as a goal scorer, providing the assist for one of the most iconic Premier League goals of all time, look away Manchester United fans, was probably the most Balotelli thing that could have happened. The assist was even his first Premier League assist. Spells at prestigious clubs like Liverpool, AC Milan and OGC Nice, amongst others, saw him produce moments of sheer magic especially at the French club. Every now and then, an audacious goal pops up on the internet, reminding the world of his undeniable talents. And now, as he navigates the twilight of his career, he still gets into altercations with coaches, punches teammates in frustration and crashes his cars. But it's hard to deny that he had a solid career, playing for some of the best clubs in Europe and producing iconic moments for club and country, like his Euro 2012 performance, scoring two goals in the semi-finals, which he dedicated to his foster mother. Super Mario's career may be a tale of unfulfilled potential, of maybes, of what could have been. But I do know one thing though, his story is a testament to the complexities of human nature, the highs and lows that shape us as human beings, and in the end, it is what makes his story so compelling. It was uniquely and undeniably human. For all the people that, you know, all the people that don't like us, that's just to shut up and watch us. That's it. Congratulations, well done. Thank you so much. The final whistle has not been blown. There's still time for you to like and subscribe for more football content.